Here's your key for assignment number 33. Our first problem, we see the number of gallons P of T of a pollutant in a lake is changing at this rate, 1 minus 3 times e to the negative 2 tenths square root of T gallons per day. So we see our rate, our derivative, is in terms of gallons per day. Our pollutant is in terms of gallons. T is in terms of days. At the start of the leak, there are currently at the, time, at the start of our time, when t is zero, we see there are 50 gallons of pollutant in the lake. We want to write an expression for P of t. Okay? So again, the idea is that we have the, the function in general is equal to the initial condition plus the total change. And the total change part, that's the thing that involves our integral. All right, so here we go. P of t, that's our function. It's equal to the initial condition. There are 50 gallons of pollutant in the lake to begin with. So we have 50 plus, and now our integral. And the total change is the integral from our starting time. We see our starting time is given to us to be zero until whenever, all right, whatever time we want, at any time t. So we have t as our upper bound. And this t matches with that t. And then the change, well, this is our change right here. So we're going to have either, uh, we're going to have 1 minus 3e to the negative 2 tenths square root. And then we have to use a variable other than t because t has been used already in terms of the integral bounds. So we just go back and forth usually between t and x. So we have square root of x dx. So this is the equation and this works. And if we want to find out how much pollutant is um, there in, on the third day, well, then um, we'll just plug in 3. And uh, if we want to find out about the 100th day, then we plug in 100. All right, we can plug in any value any for t that we want to as long as t is greater than 0. All right, similar idea with number 2, except we have two rates happening. Water tank in Camp Newton, all right, 1,200 gallons at the initial time value, and we have water being pumped into the tank at W of T, and water removed from the tank at R of T. We want to write an expression involving one or more integrals, because you can use do this all in one, or you can do it in more than one, for Y of T, which is the total amount of gallons of water in the tank um, at any time T. So here we go. Y of T equals, and going back to our previous problem, we need our initial condition for starters. Okay, so our initial condition is that there is 1,200 gallons of water. So we're going to have 1,200 plus the integral of all the change. Now our two changes are W and R. We can put them together in one integral, or we can put them separately in their own integrals. It doesn't matter. They're both correct. So in other words, what I'm saying is we can have our lower bound be 0, because again, time is 0 at the start, until t. And you can have W of x minus R of x dx, like so, all right, and the w is positive because that's water going in, and the r is negative because that's water going out. That works, or if you prefer, you can have y of t equal 1200 plus the integral from 0 to t of wx dx minus the integral from 0 to t of r of x dx. This is the one and the same because we know that we can break up an integral as long as the two items are separated by addition or subtraction. So you can write it either way. You get full credit either way. Now the challenging part, at what time on this interval will the amount of water in the tank be a minimum? But the word that's not mentioned here but is very important is the word absolute. Okay, we are looking for the absolute min, which means we are looking to do a candidates test. We had, that was from earlier in the year when we we're finding absolute extreme. We have to come up with some candidates. So hopefully you can think back as to where the candidates come from. And if so, you might recall that two of the candidates are going to be our bounds. So we are interested in the amount of water in the tank. Y tells us the amount of water in the tank. So therefore, we need Y of 0 and Y of 18 for starters. Those are two of our candidates. Any other candidates would come, see in our bounds, our two candidates, and the other candidates are our extremes our relative max and relative min. Now we're looking for an absolute min, so an absolute min is not going to occur where there's a relative max. So we're really just looking for a relative min. A relative min occurs when the derivative of the function is equal to zero. 
which means we need y prime of t. And normally that would seem to be a big issue, but it's not because we know how to quickly derive these accumulation functions. What's the derivative of 1200? Yeah, it's zero. A constant derives to zero. Now we're just deriving this accumulation function right here. And the quick way to get that is to plug in your upper bound in for the variable that's in the integrand. So y prime of t is w of t minus r of t. So we need to find out when y of t, or excuse me, y prime of t is equal to zero. We have to find out when w minus r equals zero. That is a pain in the butt to do by hand, so let's let the calculators do the work. So when we bring in our calculator, all right, we see that I've got um, w and y1, r and y2, and then in y3, I've got w minus r, or y1 minus y2. So I'm going to turn that equation on. I'm going to turn the other equations off, and you do so by just hitting enter when you are on the equal sign. So it's only going to graph this third equation, but the third equation is going to use the first two equations. Now I need to set my bounds. Now we're told that the interval is from 0 to 18. So x min should be 0, and x max should be 18. And we're interested when the graph has a change that produces an absolute min. Now an absolute min happens when the derivative changes from negative to positive. We're graphing the derivative, we want to see what is equal to zero, and specifically where this derivative changes from negative to positive. So the best way to get the graph onto the screen, again, is to hit zoom, and now that we know that they're only going to go from zero to 18, we're going to hit zoom fit, so option zero there. And it's going to take a second, as the calculator's thinking, but it's going to hopefully soon start to graph our calculator. And I'm going to, it's going to, there we go. All right, so if we're looking at this, we can see the graph. This is the graph of the derivative. So right now the derivative is negative, which means our function is decreasing, and boom, right at that point, that's where our relative min is going to occur because the derivative changed from negative to positive. And it changes again from positive to negative, and that's fine, and it looks like it does not change a third time. So we're interested in that point right there, because again, this is the graph of the derivative. When the derivative changes from negative to positive, we have a relative min. So let's find that value. So counting the tick marks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this seems to happen between 6 and 7. So we're going to do our zero finder, second trace in our zero finder. And we know what happens between 6 and 7, and we can guess, whatever, 6.5. And the calculator will think for a second, and boom, there's our answer, 6.49484. That is our third candidate, all right, 6.49484. So we need to evaluate y at these three points. Well, the first one is real easy. We know how much water is in the tank at time zero. We are explicitly told 1,200 gallons, so that's going to be 1,200. And we could prove that as well. If we plug 0 in for t, we have 1,200 plus the integral from 0 to 0. Well, look, the bounds wouldn't change, so that means that this whole thing would be 0, so we would just have 1,200. Now, for y of 18, this will be 1,200 plus the integral from 0 to 18, because, again, we're replacing t with 18, of w of x minus r of x dx. All right, so let's let the calculator do the work there. Keep in mind that w of x minus r of x, that's my y3. So I'm going to go back to my main screen, and I'm going to do 1,200 plus math 9, I'm going from 0 to 18. And again, you could put y1 minus y2 here. Because y3 is equal to y1, oh, y2 minus y1, I'm just going to put in y3. So alpha trace y3, and then dx. It's going to think for a couple moments, and, because there's a lot of calculations with those trig functions going on. And this answer, we see that's how much water is in the tank, all right, 1309.788. Keep in mind, we want to be accurate to three decimal places. And last but not least, we need to find this last one. So what I'm going to do here just to make, I've got to put a 6.4984 up there. So I'm going to just push up, hit enter, and then use the arrow keys, and I'm going to overwrite this with 6.4984.
And again, the calculator is going to take about 15 seconds or so to get this squared away. We know this relative min, so this number should be the smallest, and yes, it absolutely is, 525.242. So five. So again, what we did here was 1,200 plus the integral from 0 to 6.49484 of W of X minus R of X dx. And we get a value of 525.242 gallons. Now the question asks, at what time will it happen? So we can clearly see that's our answer at t equals 6.49484.